What's up, Shelf Addicts? Welcome back to the Shelf Addiction Podcast. Today on Book Chat, we are covering the November buddy read, The Arrangement, written by Kirsten Modglin. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Tamara, and welcome back to the podcast. If you're new here, we feed your shelf addiction with fun book conversations, bookish topics, and more. It's like listening in on your favorite book club. Participate in this discussion by joining the Facebook group, Shelf Addiction Official, or on the book club's app. I hope to hear your thoughts on today's show. You can always find me and Classy on Twitter and Instagram. The links for everything I've mentioned are below in the show notes. If you enjoyed today's episode, please support this podcast by sharing it with some book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe before you leave. That will really help me out and I appreciate you for doing so. The uncut video version of this podcast is available now on Patreon. Join us there for exclusive videos, including after shows, special episodes, and more. So if you're interested in that at all, you'll need to come on over to Patreon and sign up. As always with Book Chats, we talk spoilers here, so you've been warned. Without further ado, let's begin. Joining me is the Buddy Read feature co-host, Classy Green from the Bookish Virtual Assistant. Welcome back, Classy. Hi, Tamara. Thanks for welcoming me and bringing me back. Of course, always. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it always is. It's always, you know, I have to say thank you for the invitation. Oh, of course. I appreciate that. Uh, so you guys, before we get started with the discussion, if you're interested in today's after show, head on over to Patreon to watch it. We're talking about all kind of fun stuff. So you don't want to miss it. It's available right now. Today, we are discussing the book, The Arrangement, written by Kirsten Modglin. The audiobook is narrated by George Newbern and Sarah Malo Christensen. The book was self-published by the author January 28th, 2021. And the audiobook was published June 29th, 2021 by Dreamscape Media. It comes in at 220 pages, I believe, in the ebook. And the unabridged audio is five hours and 42 minutes. Classy, would you please share the synopsis? Absolutely. The arrangement. Ainsley Greenberg is a fixer. It's what she prides herself on. So when she realizes her marriage is at its breaking point, she makes a decision to repair it, no matter the cost. Approaching her husband to propose the arrangement is supposed to be the hard part, but Peter agrees to the salacious plan almost immediately. The rules are simple. They will date. They will each date someone new once a week. They will never discuss what happens on the dates. Soon, though the rules are broken, turning terrible mistakes into unspeakable consequences. When the only person they can count on to keep their darkest secret is each other, new questions and deceits surface. Can they truly trust the person they share a life with? Or will the vicious lies that have mounted over the years destroy everything they built? Once Peter and Ainsley vowed to stand together forever, but as they push boundaries of deception, suspicion, and temptation, each begins to wonder if till death do us part, they come sooner than they attended. Right. So, let me just say, okay, first, I took notes because I thought there was so much ridiculousness going on. I had to write down every time something crazy happened. I'm like, what? Now what? (laughs) So I wanted to remember all the crazy shenanigans. So I wrote them down. I'm glad you did because I was I was like this. (laughs) If you can't see her face, she's got the shocked face. (laughs) Several times. I was like WTF? <laughs> right. <laughs> that was exactly yeah, was my reaction. It, I'm going to tell you that. Yeah, it was a lot of what that, but I was here for it. Maybe because I haven't had something like this in a while, but I was like, okay, let's go. <laughs> See, I feel like this was such a non serious book. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yes, okay, some life happens to these people and they make some bad choices. But as things keep happening, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was. 
was. It was a little. Uh, <laughs> like, you can't expect me to take this seriously. Like, I cannot. I'm laughing. Mm-hmm. I'm laughing. <laughs> yes. But and it's it not was bad. Two, it was 220 pages. And yeah. I know. I'm like, she, she, she packed a wall up. She was like, I'm going to give it all. Everything in the kitchen sink. Yes. Basically. Like, what else can happen? I was at the end there. I'm like, what else can happen? And I'm like, oh, no. And that's and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> uh, exactly. And I was like, is this a mystery? Is this comedy? Hmm. Both. But I'm here for it. You know what? I just had, like, a rough week. And I was just like, I think I needed this. I yeah. I really, yeah. I think I needed this today definitely funny definitely yeah. i think um i wouldn't call it a thriller i think it was kind of like um <sighs> was it mystery i guess kind of you know there was a point where yeah i would definitely call it mystery because we weren't sure ooh hmm i was trying to figure out what hmm. is the question that, that needed to be answered right what yeah. is the question? What is the Maybe mystery? Suspense? Yeah, would def- it's definitely domestic suspense for yeah, sure. Yeah, but not, what is, oh, good reads. That is a very good question. Because now at first I was like, yeah, it's a mystery. Then I'm like, no, because we know who killed the cop. Um, we know who wind up killing, but well, we kind of didn't know who killed Yana or the cop's wife. But we kind of had a suspicion. Mm-hmm. Um, but, was, but that was so late in the book. Yeah, that that wasn't like the main. Mm-mm. So what does old uh, Goodreads label it? It looks like a lot of people are labeling it thriller. Mm. So at first, the only question I was able to come up with was pertaining to Stefan. And I said the question was, who is he and why did he want to talk to her so badly? That's what I wrote down when that scene came and he came to talk to her. So we found out he's a cop. That's how he, well, that was the lie. And that's another thing. The the author made this character lie to our faces. (laughs) Often. It was her point of view. This, You guys, this book was a dual point of view. And when it was Ainsley's turn, she t- she is narrating to us what is happening. And then we later find out that her narration was a lie. Right? So we are learning that this cop is harassing her. She doesn't know how he got her name. She doesn't know how he knows where I live. <laughs> And then (laughs) he comes out and she set his ass up. I'm like, oh, she set him up. But at the time, I was like, well, this is the question. Who is he and why does he want to talk to her so badly? But that does get answered when her lie is clarified. Yeah. So, yeah, it's definitely unreliable care um, narrator. Very unreliable. Um, Times two. Both of them are liars. Uh, right, I was like, and and they did it so well. I mean, the author did a, a good job with you know the unreliable uh, characters, but yeah, that the cop thing. And my first was, how does he know her name? But I was also yeah. kind of like, is she lying to us or is she really lying to her husband? Because you know we don't know Both. everything from the story, right? You know, from the date. So, so yeah. mm-hmm. just as he's lying to us and to her. Okay, so first, let me just say, okay, so as they, the back I, of the... Can, yeah. can I say one really quick thing? Sure, and please. She lied to us, Ainsley, big time, because the way she laid her husband out to be, you know, like this lame-ass... Um, Mr. Softy, yeah, he was, but she was just like, he doesn't make good decisions, and he's this, this, and that, and, you know, so it kind of played into the, he couldn't have done, you know, some of the things that we thought he did, so. Well, you know what, and I played right into that, because when it was his chapter, 
and he wanted to get out, right? And he went to go see the girl he had the date with. I said, what are you doing? This is dumb. Mm-hmm. Why did you go there at yeah. all? And then later we find out, well, he was going to go murder somebody. <laughs> he was going to murder her because he wanted to blow off some steam. He was going to rape and murder her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm like, what the? <laughs> Because I couldn't figure out for the life of me why you would go back and see that woman. For what? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it was it was the whole, yeah, because I was doing that too, like trying to, to do the, connect the dots. And I was just like, okay, too, ma- too many dots. Too many. Too many dots to connect. I'm done. So I want to talk about the, the big thing that is on the back of the book, and that is their agreement. That is what starts this off. And it's funny because after they started their agreement, I was like, wow, it hasn't even been a week and shit's going to hell in a handbasket. Like it hasn't even been, you haven't even got to your second turn yet. And things have already gone severely wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Cautionary tale. (laughs) Don't try this. Yeah. Like her (laughs) husband couldn't even get through the damn date without ripping open the envelope. So what we're talking about, y'all, what we're talking about is, so you, you heard the description. They agree to open up their marriage and pretty much don't share any details. So she goes on the date first, but he's like, what if, and this is ironic, what if he's crazy? What if he's some kind of serial killer? The irony coming out of his mouth. Mm-hmm. How do I know? You know, so she pretends to write down a name puts it in an envelope seals it put a piece of tape over it, and signs the envelope overlapping the tape so she'd know if he got into it All right she leaves out the house he is like having this conniption about her being gone and he opens the envelope yeah cannot it, wait all, all that's in there is sorry honey rules are rules she didn't even write the name <laughs> She knew he was, I mean, she mentioned how he, you know, he's impatient. He can't make a decision. He can't, you know, he's just, well, later on, she's, at first she makes it seem like he's just indecisive. But then later on in the book, find out that he has a little temper. I think she mentioned, like, when it came time to, when he wanted to move um, Stefan's wife's, no, Stefan's body. And she kind of said, he makes rash decisions and he's this, this and that. And I was like, oh, this is another sign that she's beginning to tell us that um, she didn't mention at the beginning of Because she kind of made it seem like he was this boring husband. Who, you know, they weren't having sex. Um, and, and this is uh, the reason for the open marriage, guys. They weren't having sex. They were roommates with the same last name, um, subpar relationship. You know, the kids were getting older. So she was kind of like, he's boring. He's a boring ass husband. I need a spark. Yeah, she thought, I think it was twofold. Like she wanted a little spark, but her ultimate goal was to spark jealousy in him. Yeah. That will put a fire under his ass and make right. him want to move. And, mm-hmm. and right off, it looked like it was working a little bit. She was yeah. like, oh, he's trying to help me with dinner. He's trying to, he's kissing me on the cheek and stuff. I'm like, you know, girl, I guess mm-hmm. it worked. Date one worked. Right. Just one day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like he saw her in her outfit when she was going out on the date. And he was like, he damn, she, she didn't dress up like that for me. Mm -hmm. so she was like ah but yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I have to admit like overall I don't think it's the worst plan ever but you always expect those kind of things to backfire they always do Mm -hmm. yeah because you're dealing with some emotions that you probably never thought would surface you know just Mm -hmm. when you think you know somebody which is basically this the premise of this book (laughs) or part of it just when you think you know somebody really don't know until you put their ass to the fire and she was playing with fire she basically was playing with fire but in the end you know she kind of was like but I fixed you 
She fixed them. And you know what? In the end, the irony of all of it, I mean, just to like go right to the end and tell it, the irony of all of it is she knew everything he was doing. Everything. And I'm like, who wants to be with a serial rapist and killer? Who wants to be with someone like that? Her, apparently. They both because she crazy. knew everything. Mm-hmm. She knew it from the beginning. So mm-hmm. she basically, like, in one of my favorite quotes from the book is, uh, nothing can come between us now. If we can survive these dark moments, we can survive anything. I have given us a gift. Our sins are equal. <laughs> like, this bitch is Yes. Crazy. <laughs> and in that same speech, I'm going to paraphrase because I didn't write down the quote verbatim, but she's like, I own your secret. I own you. I own your ass. Yeah. So she was really serving this up to him. And he didn't even he didn't even catch what she was saying at first until the damn end. She mm-hmm. he was just she he was just thinking, um, gosh, do we need to like go back a little bit? Because that that part of the story when she said our sins are equal, he thought he killed Stefan. Mm-hmm. Because what happened, people, you know, if you've read the story. Well, he did physically kill him. Mm-hmm. But her sin, and we can explain what that is, but her sin ultimately was that she set that up for him to do that. Kid. Right. And that's why she was saying our sins are equal. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so just, just nutty. So it's it's almost like it's one of those ones where I like it rough, which we found out later they did. They do. <laughs> She because apparently they she, he didn't realize that she did because he thought she was probably a little vanilla mm-hmm. and she probably was and they like it wild mm-hmm. both of them they they have wild and rowdy sex she said even a little blood is drawn sometimes and they don't mind i said what kind of do not draw blood <laughs> we gonna fight <laughs> do not draw blood no. what kind of stuff is this yeah you both like, crazy well, 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 well. <laughs> they deserve each other. Mm-hmm. In the end, right. By the end of the story, after what we heard, I was like, yeah, it's a match made in heaven. They didn't even realize what they had. And, yeah, uh, yeah. she fixed him as he said, you fixed me. Oh, gosh. Oh. Like, so crazy. It is crazy. It was wild. And, like, to me, at first, you know, the author took about, 40, I wrote down the percentage. It was like 45% setting this up. Like she laid the groundwork and then instantly things changed on a dime and things kept happening after, like this, like mm, 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 bam, 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 one after another. They'd have yeah. one problem, quote unquote, work on that problem, solve it. Here's another one. Solve it. Here's another and another and another. Mm-hmm. I was like, please don't give me any more. <laughs> Where, what percentage am I at? That's what I, at one point I was like, where are we? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what percentage am I at? Because <laughs> I just know she is not about to give us some more. She managed to give us some right up to the very last sentence of that yeah, book. She did. She did. She, she packed that book. Yes. With, she, man, mm-hmm. it was just stuffed with things. Absolutely. Yeah. It was outrageous. <laughs> And I don't feel, I feel like I haven't read a book this outrageous since My Lovely Wife. And that was toned down versus this. Yeah. And I did see some people in some reviews, you know, kind of comparing this to My Lovely Wife. Some even did a little Gone Girl. Mm-hmm. Um, what else did I see? Someone said I see Gone Girl because that was a, that was a long plan. That was a you know yeah, that, was, that was long game that was the long game yeah and i feel like this was the long game she was yeah. in it yeah she was and i mean she was faithful to the end with everything how she played but she they said she was a fixer and she she worked on things she was type a she was the planner she and she did it but somebody also said the arrangement by Robin Harding, and we read that. Mm-hmm. But I think the two, the main characters in Robin Harding's the arrangement is a little different than this. It wasn't a husband and wife; it was what a sugar daddy and a yes, and a young girl. So you know, it was a little different. 
But mm-hmm. I I agree with you with the lovely wife and the, the gone girl with the, the long game. Like she was way ahead of him just when he thought she I'll get ran her. circles around him. Like yeah. he really thought he had one more secret that she didn't know. Mm-hmm. He yeah. was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Like this woman knows you. <laughs> I mean, it was like she anticipated everything that he possibly was going to do. Yeah, she did anticipate it. The -hmm. only thing that could have messed up her plans was when Stefan came looking for her. If somehow he managed to just hit him with the bat one time, Mm -hmm. one time, he wouldn't have killed him. Yeah. But now we know you're crazy and you kill people on the regular. So, of course, you're going to kill him. Yeah. And she set that up with how she told him to come home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was so dramatic. So you guys, so like we said, right, we're going to set it up for you. Like we, she went on one date and I actually wrote notes. She went on one date with this guy and he starts messaging her pretty much immediately. And she's like, I feel bad because I don't think I told him like in the proper way that this was only casual, right? Because they're not supposed to be starting relationships. They're just supposed to be having fun. Mm -hmm. So I wrote down, I'm like, of course, Ansley gets a psycho right out the gate. That's what I wrote down. I'm like, she gets a psycho right out the gate. But no and behold, she searched him out. She said, I'm going to find a specific type of person that I can manipulate to manipulate my husband. (laughs) Yeah. So she told him. So we think they had this fine date. They had a little nice goodbye. And nev- that's it. Right. Yeah. We think, well, we see that they, okay, they didn't have sex or anything. And the husband, of course, is jealous because he thinks they did. Yeah. But then it comes out that no, that's not what happened at all. She goes and she spills her guts to this guy, says her real name. That she's in an abusive race relationship. Like he she's laying it on thick. Yep, to a cop. And the cop is Captain Save a Ho. So he wants to come and save her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> so she's like, I don't this guy, he's outside. I don't help me. Come home quick. I don't I'm scared. She's crying. He's beating she, on the door. I don't know how he knows my name. Just come home. How does she know where I live? Ah, you know, and and of course, the husband, Peter, is a freaking liar, too. He's supposedly working, but he is out on a date. And this, okay, side note, he broke the rules immediately. Oh, God. So the rules were, we're going to use fake names, and we're not dating anybody we know. He goes right into the office and matches on an app with this chick, his subordinate in the office. Yeah. So he broke the rules right off. So anyway, she's doing all this yipping and hollering and he's at dinner with her. Uh He jumps up and runs out to go save his wife. Yeah. She's like, I thought you were at work. She probably knew he was out with her too. The way we, the way this story is going, she knew his whole, she probably had a damn GPS on him, but I'm just saying we we didn't find that out. Yeah. But she was like, I hated to disturb you at work, but... She suspected, though, because she asked him again, well, where were you at? You know? Uh Yeah. So I think she suspected he was doing something he shouldn't have been doing. Yeah. Because, I mean, even his reaction to the phone call was kind of, you know, like, uh uh-oh. You know, like, I'm supposed to be at work, but, Mm -hmm. but I'm not. But yeah, it was, it was a very interesting plot here. And uh, Kirsten, I mean, it was only 220 pages, guys. And can you imagine all these plot twists that we're in? And we haven't even revealed all of them. No, because we haven't <laughs> talked about her friend. We haven't talked about um, <laughs> we haven't talked about the husband and wife, the cop and his wife. We haven't talked about that part. There is so much. I don't know how she crammed all this stuff in to this book. It seems almost impossible. Yeah. It was like she picked every freaking trope you could find and was like, I'm going to use this trope. I'm going to use that, that, that. Voila. Yes. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh. Okay, so let's take a quick break. I want to take a quick break right now. Check out these commercials. Please check out the book review journal available right now on Amazon. And when we come back, we will dive into more of these characters, more of the lies, more of the drama. Stay with us. Today's episode is brought to you by the Shelf Addiction Merch Store. Check out all the bookish t-shirts, notebooks, mugs, and more. Don't miss out on these original designs, perfect for any book nerd. Support the podcast and visit shelfaddiction.com forward slash merch and pick up your next favorite bookish item. Okay, welcome back, guys. What should we cover first? Because I want to give you a chance to go for some of the drama that you think we should cover next. Because I feel like I was so excited. I had to like just get all minds out right away. I have more, Um, but I know you have some. I want to talk, you know, let's go with, um, gosh, I'm trying to even go in the order. We can go with, I know. It's it's so convoluted. (laughs) It's like you're going to have to back explain it no matter what. Yeah. So (laughs) Glennon. Um, Ainsley's best friend has a secret with Pete, Peter, Pete, yes. whatever his name is, and he's been cheating, and yes. she's giving him a deadline to reveal that he's been cheating, or she's gonna tell her best friend because she can't live with it much longer. Mm-hmm. Um, and comes to find out, I'm thinking he's cheating with best friend, but no, folks. He's cheating with her best friend's husband. Yes. Seth. <clears throat> so you want to hear something funny about Holy that. Cow. So something funny about that is I actually wrote that down and then I scratched it out. So I wrote down literally. Okay. So before we figured out it was the husband, I said, Peter is cheating this whole time with her best friend. And I scratched it out. I said, no. Peter has a secret with the best friend. So immediately I'm like, that's too obvious. It's yeah. not, it's not, she's not cheating with her. Mm-mm. The way she was serving that up to him. I'm like, it's a secret where she feels she has an advantage. And if she's cheating with him, she has no advantage. Right. So I scratched it out, and, but I had no clue it was going to be her husband. Her husband. Yeah. And I felt the same way at one point. It was like, she's too, there's, you know, for her to say, you tell my best friend I can't do this anymore, it was like, like you said, there was nothing for her to gain. She had no, if, at, at one point it was like, she doesn't ha- she's not the dog in this fight. She has, mm-hmm. yeah. So it was like, okay, so what does she know on him? Mm-hmm. She's like, I got something over your head. What is it? What is, yes. Yeah. And <laughs> the fact that, okay, so when this comes out, Ainsley is like, are you gay? Are you coming out to me right now? <laughs> she seemed very, that surprised her. Mm-hmm. That one thing surprised her, but she was okay with it. She was like, so you're, he's like, I guess I'm bi, but I don't think he's bi at all. He's not bi. He was only doing that because that Seth somehow found out he was doing stuff and he blackmailed him into sleeping with him. Yeah. So I don't think he's bi at all. I just think he was effing yeah. him because he blackmailed him right, too. He wanted to keep him quiet. I'm like, why you just didn't yeah. kill him? But I think that might have been too easy because um, the wife You don't knew. kill that close to home. Yeah. And the wife knew. Yeah. The wife knew that, you know, it was just too many. Yeah, those two. So it he'd have like to kill seven. two more people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... And then in that in that part, though, in that moment, I was like, you don't care. I mean, like she cared, but she let it go too easy. Yeah, I thought that she was a little too calm with that, because especially after she told her best friend that if he cheats, I will she's him. leaving him. She's like, there's no amount of therapy that can make a cheater not a cheater. And then when that did happen, I was like, OK, so maybe she was saying okay so cheating uh at this level was different than the cheating if you're cheating with a woman you know what i mean like and i disagree with that i don't to me cheating is cheating yeah i don't care if you're gay or bi right and you just didn't tell me break up with me first Mm -hmm. yeah 
But yeah, I thought that was like too simple. That was one of those things like, no. It was too simple. It was too easy. Age we are in, 20, whatever. You just cheat on me and you didn't tell me all these years. And that's not an excuse for cheating. That's not a passable excuse for cheating anymore. Because to me, it doesn't matter if, if you're in a relationship with a said person, you're in the relationship. If you're bi, you like both. If you're in a relationship with a woman, unless you have a special agreement, you're in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Right. Which uh, Glennon and Seth did have. Yeah. So she knew he was gay, but she Mm -hmm. loved him. But the arrangement was that he couldn't get his trust fund. He had to marry a woman. So those two, you know what I mean? Like those two knew what was going on. Yeah, and he helped her. So he paid her money with her her business. He gave her Mm -hmm. insurance. They had also an agreement. Agreement. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, So it it didn't hurt her. She was just tired of it, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And she was tired of it because you hurt my best friend. Right. And that's something that, you know, I can't sign on to. I can't go sign, you know, you and Seth, y'all can do whatever you're doing, but leave my friend out of it. Mm Mm-hmm. Wow, because I would have blown a gasket. I mean, and you know, I feel bad for anyone who feels they need to hide themselves, but I'm still going to throw a fit Heck yeah. and we're not going to be together anymore. You go figure yourself out. Yeah, right. Like she said, if that's if you're coming out to me, fine, but you're still a cheater. Mm-hmm, you're still you're a cheater. Down, dirty dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Regardless of what you prefer. This guy was so disgusting honestly she probably had vibes that she shouldn't have been sleeping with him anyway he's sleeping with all he's effing all these people he's attacking and we know for sure based on what the book says that because he said he's done a lot of that but he's only brought special people to his little hideaway so we know that he raped and murdered 15 women in his home and buried them in the backyard in the backwoods but he attacked more women than that he just didn't bring them home yeah mm. like Seriously. ew yeah he's doing that and he's effing men in the banner and he's sleep- sleeping with everybody like yeah, how basically. Do you, who wants to sleep with you probably have some disease free game for everybody you don't even know what's going on and i'm sure you're not protecting yourself as you are raping all over the state (laughs) and then you gonna come home to me and try to get some get out of here get out of here because if you're because he's raping and killing he's probably not trying to protect because he's trying to probably you know disposing of evidence or doing something to the point where you know he's hoping you know he doesn't get caught Mm -hmm. I mean, I, those are all just speculations. It is a book. But I know, but nine still. Nine times out of ten, he's probably not. No, he, he's he, not. Because he's, he's been, you know, he said he didn't have the same MO every time. He didn't kill every single person he raped. No. And at one point, they weren't having sex anyway. Right. So, but that's what makes me know. Now knowing that she knows all about him, mm-hmm. there's probably a reason. Like, you know, why would she want to? Yeah, right. At all. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> That's awful. It's awful. I'm like, I cannot understand. Oh, my God. Yeah, the thing is like that you don't understand is here, honey, you had this opportunity to get away, but no, you want to spark something. Mm-hmm. And we're thinking you want to spark something because I just want our marriage to go back. You knew he was nuts, nuts from the and beginning, a rapist and a cheater <clears throat> all this time, and you're trying to spark something. So <laughs> to the point where she knew, so she knew. Obviously, she set up her husband to kill Peter. Um, I'm sorry, Peter to kill uh, Stefan. But beyond that, she was still wanted to protect him. So she takes all of the underwear that he kept, all the rope that he was using find a similar bag and she planted it so she was waiting to she probably had that Mm pre-packed and when the opportunity came up that they had to get rid of stefan's car she put the bag in there right she's the one who drove it 
to right. whatever location it was. So she was, again, plotting well ahead. Who knew if she, he would actually kill him? And if he did kill him, she was like trying to remain five steps ahead of him at all times. Yeah. She was checking off all the boxes at the what ifs. Yeah. You know, it, she, you know, she was doing the, um, I forget what they call it in surveys. Uh, when if you like, if this, then you know, that, go yes. here, the skip logic. She was doing all the little skip logics possible. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, okay, so if he does this, we'll go this way. If he does that, we'll go that way. Right. <laughs> we'll go to the left. And yeah, she had it all mapped yeah. out. Yeah. It's like, wow, we both are made for each other. Now, one thing I don't, we don't, we never found out if she knew this one thing. So, you know, she had set it up so he looked like he was doing bad stuff. So then it looked like the woman was helping him, his wife, wife. and they ran off. It, they, it looks like they ran off. Mm-hmm. But I wonder, did, I'm going to assume she know, knew, because did Ainsley know that Peter went back and murdered Mrs. DeLuca? Yeah. Because he I, threw his, her body in there where Stephen's body was. Yeah. Do you think she knew? That's what I thought, too. Like, she's got to kind of know. I think she knew, like, in her heart of heart that, because, I mean, the timing, you know, he went for the drive. Next couple of days or whatever, the woman's gone missing. Um, she knew his M.O., he, she knew how protective he was, her and their family. So, but the thing was, is that she probably didn't know where that, she probably had some doubt, but she didn't know where the body was. Right. You know, but that's another what if, because mm-hmm. he originally went to kill the girl he went on a date with. That is who mm-hmm. he originally went after. Mm-hmm. But Mallory, on, right? right? Mallory, right. But only because he ran into his colleague that he went on a date with. And she mm-hmm. said, fix your own mess, right? That inspired him to go fix his mess. Hence, he ran <laughs> off and grabbed Mrs. Right. DeLuca. Mm-hmm. Yep. But otherwise, it would have been Mallory in the woods. Instead, he grabbed Mrs. DeLuca, killed her, and threw her in the, the grave with her husband. Yeah. And, and another reason why I think she possibly knew that he killed uh, Miss, um, is it DeLuca? Yes, Miss DeLuca. I can't remember what her real name, her, her um, surname I wrote it is. down, but I think I might have an extra A on here, so it might be wrong. Yeah, but the thing is, I lost my train of thought that darn fast is uh, can't remember did totally come back. lost it yep just totally bloop <laughs> didn't come back bloop yep <laughs> yeah we were just talking about like you know this might jog your memory like did ainsley know that she he killed her or not so i still say the jury's out on that okay to me, yeah. the jury's out on if she knew. Like, it's totally possible she felt he might have ran off and killed somebody, which he was going to, mm-hmm. but she might not know if it was exactly her. Because he yeah. didn't know it was going to be her until the last minute. Yeah. So, And I think, you know, and I think some of the clues that I felt like she possibly knew is because... um he kept saying, why are you lying to, to her? And she was like, she, you know, she doesn't need to know that I'm lying. Our marriage is not of her concern. I just need to, she basically said, I need to, to the police. The police are the only people I need to convince that we are innocent, that I have no idea where her husband is. And I still like, I, I knew that there was at a point where I think she possibly knew and it was because I think when she wanted to move the body, when he wanted to move Stefan's body, that she kind of knew that he was going a little rogue and she was like, don't do that. Don't make a rash decision. And, he, you know, but he was like, I should. 
And that's where I felt like she possibly had a feeling that he could have because he was at the point now where he was just trying to to cover all his bases and why not get rid of the wife as well. Mm-hmm. But but like you were saying it he could have hmm because he was trying to move that body before he went out on that that right. that on killing that kill. right but then for oh yeah i can see what you're saying that he may not have she may not have known because him getting rid of the body kind of helped her story because since they're both missing now the cops think they ran you know, off what? It, yeah, that, 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 that she was an accomplice, that she mm-hmm. helped. So, yeah, maybe she did. Yeah, because, like, okay, so, and I do think that, now, I, now this is what I don't know. So, we know another, I guess, open end. We know that Ainsley knows that Peter is a serial rapist and killer. We know right. that she knows this. But we don't know if she knows he's thrown bodies in the backwoods. We don't know if she knows where those bodies are. Right. Because remember when he was trying to move P- um, Stefan's body, she kept saying, no, no, don't move it. And I agreed with that because it's like, why would you move a body that no one's asking about? Like, right. leave it be. You're going to dig up a body and move it. That's more likely you'll get caught versus leaving the body and he wanted to move the body because he knew that he had put 15 bodies in another location and nobody found it Uh but she didn't know that logic she just said why are you trying to move this body right so that's why i think she probably didn't know where the bodies were buried because if she knew where the bodies were buried she might have let him move the body right so she basically only knew he was a she didn't know he was a except for the first except for murdering Stefan. Well, the police said, Hey, we think that he's been doing this for a long time. They've been following Peter. They've been tracking his rapes and kills, I think. They've been because now it's all put on the police oh, officer. Right. It's it, all been put on Peter. That, I'm like Peter's and I'm like, no, Stefan's but it's really Peter. It's, right. Mm-hmm. Under the auspices of Stefan, exactly of the wife. So yeah, because of so, how she yeah. set him up, right? But they just think he's a rapist, right? They didn't say murder, did they? Uh, I they almost want to go the, back. The ligatures or something. I think they were saying they found the rope marks matched yes. the body, and I don't know if it was living. You know, um, survivors. Okay. I know it's almost like you want to go back and see. I do yeah. want to go back now because I know that he he said he did not kill everyone. Mm-hmm. He said this. Right. But that he did not say that he only killed 15 people. He said, I only brought back 15 women. Right. To so to eyes. me, that means he has killed and raped people both away from the home. Mm-hmm. But he only brought 15 back the to the home. One. Right, the ones he wanted to have a little extra fun. Right. So, so yeah. if the police have found a combination of rape victims alive and dead, mm-hmm. and they all had the same rope burns, they all had the same, you know what I mean? They would throw them in the same box with the same person, right. the same attacker. Same. Yeah. Oof. Crazy. So, yes. So, we're not sure. So, the bird, yeah. gets, I mean, the jury's out on that one that she could. She may or may not have known that where the bodies were buried, but I agree with you that if she did know um, that he had a special place that even the police hadn't found, that hey, why not move Stefan's body there? Right. And that's even more likely that we will not get caught. Right. But instead, he goes and he puts Mrs. DeLuca's body with her husband. They wait. And so, like, between chapter 33 and 34, Wait, no, 32 and 33, six months passed. So they have this little have it out. You know, I know what you did. You know what I did. We're going to fix it. Mm-hmm. Then they jump six months. And then they're having a good old time outside in the backyard, doing a project, drinking lemonade, making out in the grass. 
<laughs> and then we find out he's laid concrete. <laughs> hmm So those two bodies are under there. Yeah. So he's he's laid concrete under. He's made like a patio off the deck. And now he's going to build stairs over it. Mm-hmm. Because he's an architect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he had already made that little room. Uh, he said when he when they he had designed the house, he made that little special area. So he's been doing this before they got married. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, and obviously they not they're not scared of no ghosts because they just bury bodies. They don't care. They like, whatever. Mm-hmm. Let's have, you know, a make out right here next to these dead bodies. <laughs> it's dreadful, yes. right? It I'm is. like, it oh is. my god. But you know what? <laughs> it's a it's it makes for a good story. It does. It does. <laughs> it definitely does. But mm-hmm. it's wild. It's been a long time since I read a book that I thought was just that outrageously wild. Yeah, to the point where you're giving me plot twists up into the very, I mean, last minute, like darn near the last pair. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, 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 no. (laughs) So I was like, what else is going to happen? I know he thought he had one last secret. He said at the very end, he's like, you know what? I used to like women, but now I just like my wife. I only want my wife. And he kind of says for now, right? He's like, I could Mm -hmm. always go back to it. And so he's putting his little last souvenir from Mrs. DeLuca into the bag. He's like, wait a minute. There's an envelope in there. His stomach is starting to turn. He like The whole bag is empty. Yes. It should not be empty. No. Because what? Because that's where he kept all the tokens that he had, the mementos that he kept from all his victims. Yes. And that shows how dumb he is because he thought that, you know, Peter might have been a copycat at first. And then he realizes, oh, she took all that stuff out of here and put it in his ride. And she knows all the business because she put the, the same style letter written in the same way she sealed it the same way she signed the back he opens it sorry honey rules are rules no secrets no secrets i was like damn right damn 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 (laughs) nobody else is gonna want you but her right dad are you gonna have to kill me Mm -hmm. yeah and i don't know how she can sleep in that house with him and be with him i'd always have one eye open like is he gonna murder me at any time like he's murdered a lot of people he could kill me at any time yeah and it won't matter what you know because you'll be dead yeah (laughs) but i think she has that thing of he because he says i always loved you you know and i think that's how she she used it against him that you know like i know your secret you know mine but like you said that isn't It doesn't matter. It's a matter of who can kill who first at this point. (laughs) Yeah, because honestly, like, let's say in another six months, he's getting the itch again, right? Mm -hmm. He knows you know. He knows you already know. And that is what leads me to this next point. Now, we have never, ever in the whole time of the Buddy Reed thriller thing done (laughs) a series. A series. We've and never we done it. This. I no. didn't realize this was a book one in a series at all. No, it's three books in this series. So yeah. book two is called The Amendment and book three is called The Atonement. So these open questions we have, I bet they're addressed. Yeah. And I'm looking now to see like how many pages and there's there's and I think this is probably the shortest book we've read. Because yes. this was, you know, 220 pages, five hours long, if read it at regular speed. I listened at 2.0. I got that sucker done in three hours. And, yeah. So, so yeah. And each one is, it looks like each book is less than. Less than 220? 250, yeah, 250. The last one is 232. Um, book two is 214. 
Okay, so we have a decision to make, I feel like. And this is what I want to talk to you about. We have a decision to make. Because honestly, huh? You want answers? I want answers. I'm sorry. I just want answers. Okay. This is is too outrageous. Like, I need answers. Yeah. Because these questions specifically, and I'm going to try to write down these questions for next time. Or at the very least, I'm going to re-listen to this podcast episode to refresh me because I'm going to want to know if those answers get questions, you know, get those questions, get answers. Answer. Lord have okay. mercy. Yeah. Usually this would be like plot hole, plot hole, plot hole, but we can't do that because this is a trilogy. Yes. So there is more to be discovered. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Even if, you know, if you don't want to do like a buddy read like fully for the month, because I know this. This is something that we don't do regular if, if we wanted to do like a add on or whatever. Or like, you know, once we go into book club and see, because I know you want to bring that probably up to book club. Like, do you guys want to finish? Do you want to do the rest of the series? We usually don't do this. We but don't. if they don't, I want answers. I want answers. So you guys, you must follow and subscribe because we don't know what's going on so you need to come over and we'll we'll know as late as you do Mm -hmm. so you need to come on over to the book clubs app and join us that's where most of the activity is right now the book clubs app and join the, the discord and come on and give your two cents because if the book club wants to continue then we'll probably keep posting here on the buddy reads until we're done yeah If the book club doesn't want to continue, then I'm going to put it on Patreon only. So you want to know what's going to happen. (laughs) Yeah. Because I'm just as surprised as you'll be. (laughs) Exactly. Because this book was published in 2021. Book two was published this year in February. Book three was published in July of this year. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, and it is definitely only three books because the first line under book three is the highly anticipated nerve-shredding conclusion. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Nerve-shredding. Yeah. And I mean, (laughs) and when we say some of the stuff is like unbelievable over the top, some of it is, but I'm just like, it was so entertaining. It was. And, and it was fast. I, I don't think I've ever finished one of our books that quickly. No, not at all. And it was, it was just over the top that I was just like, I had to, I'm just like, mm-hmm. it was a train wreck. Yes. Mm-hmm. It was, it, I was like, and I'm here, I'm here for it. I could not turn away. And, and I've had seen some people like, I DNF did. This was just over the top, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. And that's what it is. It's on purpose that way. Exactly. That's exactly how I felt like. Yeah. She did this shit on purpose. Yes. And we got to realize, too, that sometimes life is stranger than fiction. Y'all want to act like some of this shit don't, doesn't happen? It definitely you know, does. You better start reading true, listen to some true crime. Mm-hmm. People do wild things out here. Yeah. And when I was reading those reviews, like, this is this is unbelievable. It's over the top. I was like, y'all have not listened to any true crime podcast. You guys have not listened to the news, have you? There's some people this- who say, like, even that relationship stuff, like, for real. I have heard people say they do wild, wilder stuff than that. Hmm. That's why it's like, I'm here for it. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was over the top and I was here for it. I could not turn away. I was like, what y'all do next? Exactly. Y'all crazy mofos. What y'all about to do next? Because I'm sitting here like, oh my God. What the? What the? Oh my God. <laughs> when, you, when you sent me that, that uh, theme or that gif, 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 uh, gif I was like, uh oh. Because I hadn't got there. I know we, you know, it was no spoilers, but I knew it was going to get crazy. Because, like you were saying, the first date and it went to shit. Mm-hmm. It was a shit show the first freaking date. Yeah. And I was like, Some, I know it's going to be explosive. So I was like, okay, once I get to this point. And then, you know, it was like the first one, it was like, whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. I couldn't even send you all the polls I was doing. I was just like, I'll talk to her at seven. That's why I'm like, <laughs> look, I can't even say 
anything. I'm just going to leave this gift right here. That's all I'm going to do because yeah. there is not enough words. No. No. <laughs> just save it, it for the pod. It would too many. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was just like this one just says it. Damn. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was enjoyable. I will just tell you. It was y'all. fun. I had a good damn it was just time fun. Yeah. This book and I needed that this week. Yeah. So thank you very much, Miss Kirsten Moglin. Yes. I applaud you. Okay. You have entertained me. Now with that, let's rate it real All fast. Right, ma'am. You go first. Four. Four? Okay, I'm a four too. Her. Yeah. It was I mean, entertaining. It wasn't perfect. We had some issues, but it was entertaining. I had a good time. Um, yeah, it had some issues, but overall. It's, it's hmm. just fun. Like some stuff is just dramatic for the sake of being dramatic you know yeah. yeah and guess what i couldn't guess all the things i was still like what what <laughs> yes and that's what i was ticking off too like didn't see not yeah seth really threw me seth was my first i was like are you kidding me? and then are that dinner me? let me just say they kept they went to their house for a dinner and Seth's like, hey, want a beer? Let's go to the man cave. And now after the fact, thinking about that, I'm like, oh, y'all went to fuck? That's what y'all doing in the man cave? <laughs> While your wives are drinking, sipping wine in the kitchen? Oh, right. Uh, and Glennon was probably like, oh. I know. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. It's a mess. And, right, and that's the other thing that's so entertaining about this, because after the fact, that those are the things that you are thinking about and you're just like i bet you that's why you know and and when you can think about that after you've read it and you just you know you're just kind of putting in the missing pieces those are fun things those that's what i like you know about books and you're just like oh now i see it now i see it she did you know she mapped it out pretty good and i mean um it, it was not perfect. She used every trope possible. Fun. Um, it was self-published. It was 220 pages of fun. Now, y'all. that I'm is a book that is packed. And I have to admit, I have not. Y'all know we love the Mercy Thompson series. I love that series. And that is another book that packs a big punch in a smaller book, right? So mm-hmm. outside of that series, I have not read any other books that have that much plot in a small package. It's a mm-hmm. tight story. There's yeah. no extra fluff. Yeah, and that's the other thing. It was like she didn't have time to to to, to do all of that. Guess what so we weren't doing? Be- we weren't sipping coffee. We weren't looking at the lawn. We weren't describing the street. We didn't know what bedding they had. You know what I'm saying? Nope. Like all of those yep. mute details were not there. Yeah. And, and even the description of like the family and the kids and, you know, she, she, she let us know they had kids, the relationship with the kids, you know, how it had changed, but it, it was precise. Yes. It was, yep. They used to do this. Now they have friends. They don't talk this anymore. It was, you know, but it wasn't, it wasn't all that minutia to mm-hmm. fill up to get to 352 pages. Yes. Or 300 pages. That just goes to show you don't need it. Sometimes it's nice to read some pretty prose or, you know, just feel, Mm -hmm. get some ambiance, right? It's nice sometimes, but it's not mandatory. You can have a wild ride, it's not necessary. We don't know what their clothes look like and what the shoes were and what they ate at dinner and what wine they sipped. You know, all that other stuff that we always get. Yeah. Nope, nope. We knew he had a dad bod. She was a redhead and curvy. Yes. You know what I mean? Like those, the, the, the things that we really need to know. Like I can, I need to imagine what she looks like. And, you know, and because they're going on dates with other people. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was important that we knew exactly what they were, what they looked like as a couple and what they possibly look like to these new people that yes. they were going on dates with. And the author set all that up within 45% of this first book. She set 
all everything we ever need up. So I bet you going into book two is bam, we're off to the races. There is no more yeah. setup required. Nope. None. So I'm ready. Bring it. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> So we are continuing this either way, but the question is going to be, is it going to be on this public feed or is it going to be in Patreon? Yeah. So So, you want to hang around and find out and maybe even join the group and give your two cents (laughs) on it. Please come over because I know it. I think this is going to be a good discussion because you're going to have those people. This was too over the top. It was just unbelievable. Okay. Okay. I, I so be it. it. Yeah, I'm, I'm bring it. For it. I'm ready for it because I'm just like, mm-hmm. I love all of it. Two pages mm-hmm. of unbelievable over the topness. Yes, and yes. I liked every moment. It was a wild ride. And I'm like, you know what? And those are probably the same people that love the um, the housewives or whatever. And watch that. Judge this. Oh, I watch that and enjoy this book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. like, I like it all. Like seeing all the reality tv stuff y'all want to judge this i know so it's fun this was fun i know and it's like that's the thing we're not snooty readers on shelf addiction we are not snooty readers we like all kind of stuff yeah but she did the damn thing i'm just gonna give her 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 credit yeah she did she did it in her them 200 those 220 pages it was fun it you know it was fun yes I and concur. I enjoyed it. And I, you know, you want to talk about the narrators as well? Yeah, we can do that we pretty quickly. Um, there okay. were a ma- one man, one, one woman, you know, alternating narratives. And I liked them both. It was easy to listen to. I listened on 2.0 and I was, I got every single thing. It didn't even feel like they were talking fast. Fast. No, not at all. They were, they were enjoyable. There was nothing you know, glaring that just made me feel like I it, that they did an awful job. It was it was decent. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm curious to see if they would be the same. They probably will be. I'm assuming since she did so well with this book, that those will probably be the same narrators. Actually, I'm gonna look right um, quick just to make sure. Yeah, because I have seen people switch up the narrators. George and Sarah. George and Sarah. Yep, they're the same for all three books. Okay. Yay. I'm just hoping Scribd has all three. Yes, they do. Yay. Thank you very much, Scribd. <laughs> <laughs> I love Scribd. Because, you know, sometimes Scribd can, ha- can be funny with, with their algorithm, you know, so. Actually, I should go yes. in there and download those right now just in case mm-hmm. it decides to disappear. Yep. In case you guys didn't know that, yeah. Scribd does that. Yes, if you want to try script, I do have a link in the show notes, FYI. You can get first <laughs> month for free. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. Yes. That okay, I fun. think we're done there. What do you think? Yes, we're done. Okay, we are going to call it here. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you're still here, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button before you go. And we will catch you in the next one. Take care of yourselves. Bye, guys. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review or like this episode on your favorite podcast player. It seems so simple, but it really helps me out. You can share this podcast with other book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. You can also join the Shelf Addiction Patreon family. For as little as $2 a month, you will help us produce even more awesome content for your ears. You can also consider joining the Shelf Addiction official Facebook group where we talk all things bookish and more in a safe space. The Shelf Addiction podcast is a part of the Nerdy Maven Network. You can also reach us via email at info at shelfaddiction.com. Thank you for listening.